Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, on this channel, we talk a lot about learning and education and academia, but for a lot of us, learning doesn't come easy. And in this video, I wanna talk about how to become a better learner. How can you transform yourself from being someone who maybe doesn't remember everything you've learned or doesn't find learning enjoyable. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through four things that I want you to consider and think about when you're learning to help you down that learning journey, to help you learn things better, to help you become a better learner. Because a lot of the time, it's not because you can't learn, it's not because you're not able to learn, it's not because you're not quote unquote smart enough, but rather because you haven't quite got that like learning equation on point. So firstly, I want to think about the fact that learning is should just not always be for accumulating knowledge, but actually learning should be a process that you do to apply that information into a real life situation in the future. So, you know, when you read a book, when you listen to a podcast, when you speak to someone, whatever it is that you're learning, you're learning it because you are then going to apply that information into your real life. The same way that as a child, we teach a child how to brush their teeth. They've learned that. It's now a skill that they're going to use and apply in their future. So again, whenever you're learning something, you want to always think about how can I apply this into my future? And that is what step number one is. Number one is to remember that memory is always Always enhanced by relevance and by this I mean that when an information is relevant you're more likely to embed that into your long-term memory and actually retrieve it later and remember it now not everything we read not everything we come across is going to be relevant right um, and that is the key thing you want to always try to think about way to access um, your long-term memory by trying to make it relatable to your situation. And you know, ultimately, like we are selfish by nature, we only remember things that are related to us in some way. So in some way you need to try to get that information, like make it more personal to you. Try to think of it in a way that you are able to um, relate it to your, like maybe the module you're learning, um, how can that all, how does that all come together? Um, or like the subject that you are like passionate about or you want to like pursue in the future. If you're able to relate it um, to something, then you're more likely to be able to re retrieve it later on. There's actually quite a lot of research that's been done in this. There's a paper that I'm gonna put over here. The title is, The Effect of the Amount of of information and its relevance on memory-based and stimulus-based judgments. And this paper, these authors, they actually looked at um, whether or not having information that's more relevant or like based on some sort of stimuli that's like from the past is more likely to lead to a better memory when they come to like testing memory. And that was the case, which is really, really interesting. And one thing that I like to do to be able to enhance this is to carry a notebook around with me um, or some sort of like what you can do on your phone. But whenever you learn something new um, and whenever you ha kind of find some new information is to try to relate it somehow um, to why this could be important to you, how you may be able to use it in the future, um, how it may relate to something in your past. You're more likely to remember it because there's a clear purpose in mind as to why you wrote that down. The next uh, concept to think about to become better learner is that memory functions uh, quite strongly by associations. So associating um, your what you're learning with a cue um, and something that you want to pick up. So associations can be really powerful. There's a lot of research that's been done on associations and um, like there's so much studies that have, have looked at having a cue for something and then you're now associating that cue with your particular task that you're interested in learning and as a result that skill gets learnt and one of those examples is the Pavlov dog experiment um, whereby there was like a cue um, and there's a treat and there's a skill that they want to learn and that whole pathway was reinforced as a result of there being an association with the cue, the reward and the skill, so the thing that they're learning. So that's why in psychology, associations are seen as a really powerful tool to be able to learn. Some ways that you can utilize this is by creating a story. So um, some, I know that some people do this when they're studying, is to make a story out of whatever it is that you're learning, because now you've made this association, you've now like made this like story. So you've associated one part of your learning to the other part, to the other part, and you now have this like lineage um, and this story that you can remember and you're more likely to be able to pick out all the parts because it's now all associated with each other. 
Another way is by using lists. Um, so if you have a long list of um, whatever it is that you're trying to remember and learn, um, and then you remember the first one or two things, you're more likely to associate those two things with the rest of the list and you'll remember it. Um, so that's like, that could be quite useful if you're trying to memorize like chemical formulas or um, like something you know, sort of like atoms or something that you're trying to learn at school. Um, and you want to build this list up then when you remember the first two, you're more likely to remember the rest of them because you associated everything in that list together. Another way is by using um, trigger items, um, and that's a cue. So uh, you could use like a color, you could use um, an image. Um, one thing I used to do quite a lot was to draw out diagrams for and what I want to remember. And when I drew that diagram out, it would essentially like remind me of the information that surrounds that diagram. So I'd usually like put things into maybe like a, like a kind of spider diagram or into like a, a, a graphic or um, just like any sort of image that reminds me of the topic that I'm trying to learn. A lot of the time, like I can just pull it out and the, pull out the image and everything else kind of just like, rem I just remember everything as a result of that image. And there's actually a study, um, and the title is Positive Emotion Enhances Association Memory. And this is quite interesting because what it, the study was saying is that when you have positive emotions, when you're learning something, you're more likely to associate things together and strengthen your memory. And the, the reverse was also shown that negative emotions weaken associations. So um, if you are trying to learn, try to be happy about it in some way uh, because you're more likely to strengthen your memory and remember it afterwards. The next is that reading does not have to be linear. And, and by that, I mean that a lot of the time when we read things and we want to learn, um, we expect to start from the beginning and end at the end. We never think that we can just like dip into uh, books. We never think that we can dip into topics. We always Kind of have this like unwritten rule where you start from the beginning and you end at the end no matter whether it's relevant or not you just have to do that and i think that makes us bad learners because it it means that we are limiting ourselves and we're really resulting in ourselves having to read things that we're not interested in i do this a lot with non-fiction books especially i start from one point i look at the contents page i jump to the next point i do feel i used to feel really guilty about it i used to think to myself well you're not reading the book in its entirety that's not how you read but actually when I'm trying to learn, the information is put onto that paper, the information is put onto that book for me, it's up to me to pick out the parts of that book that is important for me. And ultimately what matters is that you are learning the key principles and the idea. You don't have any responsibility to have to read the book from start to end. And that's what makes you a good learner is by understanding what it is that you actually want to pull out and being able to pull that out in its exclusivity. And last but not least is by thinking critically. And when we're learning, we want to really think about things more at a deeper level and not just surface level. And this will make us a good learner because it really shows us that we are able to not just pick out surface level things, but we can really interrogate ideas and that can help us grow. Always question things. Um, when you're learning, never just take anything for face value. Question things. Ask why the author did it. Do you think the author has any biases? Do you think that the author has um, a particular point of view that that's why they're going down that route? Ask yourself these important questions because by asking yourself these questions, you can, I guess, uh, um, elucidate certain things and you can pick out um, topics and pick out ideas that you can then maybe like look at and grow and if you're looking at research ideas you can pick those out as a gap in literature and you can really interrogate the reading and by doing that you're actually helping yourself uh, improve your memory for that information because you're not just reading it you're interrogating it in more depth and that will make you a better learner. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful and um, I hope that that gave you a few tips for how you can learn a bit more effectively and be a better learner and really pick out um, aspects of your learning. That means that you're not just like sitting there opening a book and reading, but rather you're interrogating text, you're associating, you're creating lists, you're making it relevant to yourself. And those are things that are going to help you memorize and, and learn and stick and actually be able to apply that into your everyday life. I hope you guys find this video useful and if you did don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.